to the Wicked Webs We Weave podcast. I'm your host, Ryan McKern. Join us weekly for tales of cursed media, haunted web series, ARGs, creepy pastas, unfiction, and all things horror. Sit back, dim the lights, and welcome to the wicked webs we weave. Welcome to Baltimore, Maryland, home of literary giant Edgar Allan Poe, musical legend Cab Calloway, and home to some of the best seafood you will ever get on the East Coast. Remaining in Baltimore, Maryland, I present to you the horse you came in on saloon. The horse you came in on saloon in Baltimore has been treating patrons to fine spirits, food, and entertainment for over 246 years. Established in 1775, the horse you came in on saloon became notorious for being one of Edgar Allan Poe's favorite drinking establishments, and also said to be the site of his last drink, and perhaps a glimpse into his mysterious death. It's no wonder wonder why Poe's spirit still visits this Baltimore staple. Called the Horse by locals, it is the only bar in Maryland to survive before, during, and after Prohibition. It has remained open and operational under its name since 1972, when the owner acquired the bar. It was funded from a horse race bet he won the day of purchase. Howard Gerber the owner would unknowingly acquire all the haunts that came with the bar. Many claim to see Edgar Allan Poe's spirit walking to the horse at night. Due to the mystery of his passing, one can see why this literary legend would come back to visit the place of his final drink. It was said that Poe was found feverish in a state of delirium the day that he died. Found outside the horse, he came in on saloon, dressed in ill-fitting clothes. Many speculate he was involved in voting fraud in exchange for drinks. Other costumes and things would be found on vagrants and many people in exchange for drinks were voting at the time. Some state alcohol poisoning to the cause of death, and other theories include rabies, alternative illnesses. Furthermore, the death certificates went missing for Edgar Allan Poe. But one thing remains clear. Poe's life, and thereafter, continued to make its impact on the living world. Reports of beer mugs being thrown to the floor bar stools being pulled from under guests by no visible human being, swinging chandeliers, opening desk drawers, and an attic that will leave your neck hair at its rays from the presence of spirits past. Many patrons believe the glasses breaking are post spirit, perhaps upset that the bar no longer serves cognac, his favorite drink. Even in the daytime, this historic pub and restaurant is tuned into the ghostly activity. Many employees have accounted of strange voices being heard inside, despite being alone in the bar, and also with the shuffling and noises of many people. However, the bar would be closed and empty. Perhaps it's our favorite poet Edgar, reciting one of his beloved poems and stories to the crowd. And we bring our journeys to the haunting at the Admiral Fell Inn, another legendary Baltimore spot. Through its seven buildings, all through history, lives have been lost at the Admiral Fell Inn. 
Known as one of the two most haunted hotels in Baltimore, and one of the most haunted hotels in the country. Located in the historic waterfront neighborhood of Fells Point, Baltimore, this hotel offers charm and guests who have not checked out in the afterlife. The beginning of Fells Point begins with William Fell, who is infatuated with the point of Baltimore Harbor, offering its deep waters, proximity to agriculture, and thick forest. William Fell's son Edward laid out streets around 1763 in Baltimore and sold plots of land for homes. The waterfront village port flourished and eventually incorporated into a Baltimore town in Jonestown and all together forming a new town of Baltimore. The point became a shipbuilding and commercial center. Fells Point shipyards built and supported dozens of privateers during the War of 1812. The pirates preyed on British shipping vessels, consequently making Baltimore a principal target during the war. This led to the attack on the city and bombardment in 1914 of Fort McHenry, another part of Baltimore's haunted lore, which became the Anchorage. In the early 1900s, the Port Mission Women's Auxiliary established a Christian boarding house to care for wounded and ill seamen, the Mercy nuns caring for the seamen the best of their abilities. However, many would die, never making it home. As the world outchanged changed the anchorage doors, bars, brothels, gambling, so did its purpose. In 1929, the YMCA took over the anchorage and explained, expanded it to a 150-room Siemens YMCA. Over its 30-year tenor, it was often referred to as the doghouse for its small space, lodging over 50,000 sailors until its closure in 1955. The building then was leased to a vinegar bottling factory and ran until the 1970s. Renovation of the building in 1985 led to its renaming as the Admiral Fell Inn. The 80-room hotel was constructed out of seven buildings, including the historic Central Building, and the energy felt within leaves many with chills and uneasiness. Through its narrow winding hallways, it is said ghost hunters have been able to photograph paranormal events, including a ghostly woman. Room 413. One of the most haunted spots in the hotel is the Room 413. In 1999, Gary Mick, a homophobic murderer, stalked guest Christopher Jones, a guest whom he suspected was gay. Jones is staying at the inn for a pharmaceutical convention in town. Mick cornered Jones in room 413 where Jones was staying and bludgeoned his skull with a hammer. It is reported that Mick struck Jones nine times then walked away. Mick was caught after a survivor of one of Mick's previous attacks came forward. Police were able to match Mick's fingerprints found in room 413 with the murder. Many staff still account cold and unsettling feelings when walking by room 413 or for providing maintenance in the room. It is said that some have seen Christopher Jones' spirit in the room. A EVP reading spoke the words murder and hammer. The Sailor Suicide with all of the sailors who lost their lives within the walls of the hotel, when it was a recovery hospital in the 1800s, one can only imagine how many rooms and halls and passageways of the Admiral Fells Inn have spirits and ghosts in its comforts. Once a German sailor recovering in the anchorage was terrified of going blind after contracting a disease in North Africa. He felt death was a better alternative and committed suicide in the hotel. 
It is said his ghost is seen walking the halls, not aware of where he is, why he is there. Wandering, wandering aimlessly. In the room 218, guests woke, were awakened to the sound of footsteps, and seen the ghost of a woman dressed in old-fashioned clothing, walking through halls, walking through the walls, and urging guests to go back to sleep. It is believed the ghost is the spirit of a nurse that tended to the ill sailors so many years ago. Other accounts of the hotel cite a dog apparition. No one knows where this dog spirit came from, or what year. Parties and loud noises from rooms without guests in them. In other accounts, perhaps the sailors are partying in the afterlife within the walls of the Admiral Fell Inn. The hotel is much sought after to this day, treating guests to ex exceptional service. Drop by and have a stay. Tell them Ryan sent you. Thank you for joining me once again for the Wicked Webs We Weave podcast. I am your host, Ryan McKern. Please join us weekly for new stories of the historical supernatural. Haunted web series, haunted media, all things horror. Until next time, au revoir.